Routing and Switching Essentials, Chapter 1 Introduction to Switched Networking or Switch Networks. Our goals here basic introduction, LAN design, and to get us familiar with the switched environment. Our objectives are to describe what a converged network is, how converge takes data, voice, and video and puts it into one. Describe what a switch network is in a small to medium sized business and explain the process of framing of frame forwarding. Framing. Compare collision and broadcast uh, issues and talk about some of the complexity of our growing network. So, our network is growing more and more complex. We're no longer just having just straight data. Our digital world is changing. We are wanting converged information. And what I mean by that is I want video, voice, and streaming capability all put on one network. I want to be able to have video and audio sync and streaming YouTube, Netflix, from a server to whatever device I have. And I don't want to be hardwired. I want to be mobile. And those are concerns of the everyday user. They want to be able to access whatever they want to access, whenever they want to access it, and whatever device they want to access it from. So networks are becoming more, or the, the access to networks are becoming more important. The idea of anywhere access is becoming more important. And as those complexities grow, so must our network. Our uh, network must be able to be secure, reliable, and always available, also known as high available. So this element or this idea of converged network is taking root, and that is where we're combining data, video, voice, and it's all going on one wire. And that is allowing us to have increased items for collaboration. And to support that collaboration, our networks are having to employ those now converged solutions, combining them. It doesn't matter if it's voice or video or messaging. It doesn't matter if you're mobile or static. You want the features that you want, how you need them, when you need them. That is one of the key, or the key benefits of converged networking. Regardless of the type of traffic, onto one. Substantial savings over the traditional installation of equipment and management. That means managing of voice, video, and data. No longer do you want a telecom person or data com person or a security camera person. You want it all in one easy to manage network. You want to be able to integrate everything. This idea has brought the concept of borderless switching. And Cisco's borderless networking is an architecture that allows organizations to connect anyone, anywhere, anytime, and on any device. And that is securely, reliable, and seamless. That is Cisco's big push for this borderless network design. So the general architecture or the hierarchy used for this borderless switch design is a three-tiered system, a core, a distribution, and an access. And that allows for a hierarchy, modularity, resilience, and flexibility within this design. However, on some organization, they may use a collapsed core and distribution. That's still pretty common in the smaller and medium businesses with access still being its own separate layer. That way, you can have specific core equipment that's still separate from your access layer equipment. Examples could be a distribution switch running every building, access switches covering every floor, and all of them being tied together to a centralized or core building. I do work at a college campus. We have everything being tied back to one key building. That one key building runs our core switches. From those core switches, 
they run distribution switches in all of the adjacent buildings. Inside each adjacent building, they have access layer switches managing all of the different floors and classrooms. Roles of a switch network. Switching technologies are crucial to network design nowadays. Switches allow traffic to be sent only where it is needed, i.e. no longer using hubs. A switch LAN. They allow for more flexibility, better traffic management, and additional services. Services that could include quality of service, security, wireless, phone, and other mobility services as required. So some of the form factors for our switches. It could be a fixed port switch. What I mean by that is these switches, they're fixed. You cannot add or remove ports from them. Next, modular. These could be a modular chassis. You can add and remove blades as needed. So if you need fiber capability, you add the fiber switch. If you need two things of fiber, one thing of the copper, you add the modular cards as you need it. Stackable is another one. Stackable switches connected by a specialized cable so that they can set, uh, share both power and data. Similar to modular, but it's going to be a hybrid between both because these are going to be normally fixed port switches that can share. So switching as a general concept, a switch port makes a decision based on the ingress or in and a destination port. I want to communicate with something on my LAN. I will send a uh, signal to my switch. That signal will be on its ingress and it will make a, a decision based off wh where I want to go. Where's the MAC address I want to go? Where is it located? And that's the decision making. A LAN switch keeps a table that it is used to determine how to forward traffic. That's going to be a CAM table or MAC address table. Cisco LAN switches forward Ethernet frames based on destination MAC addresses of the frame. A switch must learn which devices exist on each port. It must build up a MAC address table or commonly referred to as a content addressable memory table. CAM table. The mapping device port is stored in the CAM table. That way it knows I want to send a message to the MAC address of PC3. It will look up the MAC address of PC3 and go, oh, it's connected to port 5. Send this message out port 5. CAM is a special type of memory and that's normally cache and that's saved for high-speed searching. The information in the MAC address table is used to send those frames. There are two methods for forwarding material. Store and forward and cut through. Store and forward will take the entire frame, verify it to make sure it's a valid frame first, and then forward it to the correct port once the entire frame has been received. Cut through. Cut through, sees the frame, and it just forwards it on. Doesn't do any type of error checking, it just forwards it. Store and forward will check for errors. Cut through won't. Cut through, however, faster. So when you have things that are required for like VoIP or more time sensitive data, cut through is the way to do it. Store and forward switching, well, again, double checks for errors performs automatic buffering. It's slower, but there are no errors. So what it does is it looks at the frame header and then it calculates the CFS checksum or the CRC checksum and it verifies that the frame is correct. Cut through, no error checking, no automatic buffering, but allows the switch to start forwarding in about 10 microseconds. It's quick. Here they're looking at just 
the preamble, the destination MAC address, and that's it. By the second, by the time it gets to those, it's already forwarding the frame on. No error checking whatsoever. The last two major concepts, collision domain and broadcast domains. So a collision domain is a segment where the device must compete to communicate, i.e. on a hub network. If you had multiple devices trying to communicate, there would be collisions. So a collision domain is where you have to compete to communicate. All ports of a hub is a collision domain where every port on a switch, not the entire switch, but per port is a collision domain. A switch breaks the segment into smaller collision domains. So a PC connected to a switch port, that's one collision domain. PCs connected to a hub, that's one giant collision domain. Next, broadcast domains. A broadcast is anything happening layer two, and that's going to be a specialized frame that will be sent to all MAC addresses. It is not forwarded to layer three. It's basically, hey, who's out there? Or, hey, who is this MAC address? Those are broadcasts. If there's more than one switch involved, it's going to broadcast all the switches. It's on the layer two level, go to all layer two devices, that are not separated by a layer three device. Lastly, let's talk about how to alleviate network congestion. Normally we separate LANs into collision domains, i.e. we use switches. We provide full duplex communication both ways. We take advantage of high port density. We take advantage of larger frames, higher speeds, Maybe we also take advantage of quality of service and other resources that are there, other networks resources that are there for us to use. The big thing from chapter one that is normally tested on, converged. Make sure you understand what converged means. Make sure you understand the concept of borderless network architecture. I want to thank you guys. I hope you guys have a great day.